So I'm pretty late to giving you a review of Ready Player One. If you're watching this video, if you're tuning in, yeah, yeah, thank you very much. So yeah, I'm about to give my review with some spoilers, so be warned if you've not seen the movie, maybe you should tune out right now. But before we get to my review, I wanna talk about the app Stardust. If you don't know what this app is, Stardust is an app where you can give your own 30 second review to movies, TV, or like trailers. Yeah, you can give your 30 second review or react as like a video. So it's like Snapchat or Instagram for like reviewing movies and TV shows. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, if you don't have it, get it. It's free. You can make an account. And yeah, it's really fun to do. Just give your short reviews and it's awesome. Make <laughs> like new friends online. That's pretty awesome as well. And you can also follow me at Corey D. Rudolph on Stardust. So yeah, go check it out if you have not seen this app or not if you don't have this app on your phone already. So yeah, check it out. So let's get the review and yeah, let's get, get to it. This movie is fun. This movie is just lights out fun from the very start. I mean, yeah, it just starts off just like when you're in the oasis, it is just like, yeah, you have that scene where with like the race scene where you see you have King Kong and <laughs> the T-Rex from Jurassic Park. It's just a crazy way to start this movie. And yeah, the movie is fun as hell. And I'm a person who read the book and they really capture the spirit of the of the book in this movie. And yeah, that's what I really liked about it. I feel like they got the characters right for the most part. Of course, the main character, Parzival, played by Ty Sheridan in the movie. I thought Ty Sheridan played him well. I think he plays him Wade Watts well in the real world. And of course, Parzival in the Oasis, he's pretty good. Samantha, or yeah, not Samantha, her name is Samantha Cook. But oh, Samantha Cook, I mean Olivia Cook. And yes, she plays Samantha well, uh, Artemis. She plays her well, and like um, Olivia Cook and uh, Ty Sheridan, they both have great chemistry with each other. And of course, you have I forget the actress that plays H. Um, I don't kind of like I don't really I forget her name. She's in the Master Master Nun, but she's also pretty good. And then you have Shoto and and Dido. Oh, not Shoto. Yeah, Sho and Dido, which. Yeah, they they were more involved in the book. Here in the movie, they have them involved, but they they're not really standing out too much in the movie, which is like, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm glad they're showing them, and they're more, I guess they're much younger here in the movie, but in the book they seem much older, and their fates are of course different if you've read the book. So yeah, and then you got Ben Mendelsohn, of course, playing the villain, uh, Sorrento, and he. Of course, he's gonna play a good villain. I think he's a little bit over the top, but he's having fun playing this role. I'd I kind of like that as well. And of course, Mark Rylance playing Halliday. I thought he was pretty good as well. Probably the most emotional standpoint of the movie of any character in the movie. And so was Simon Pegg playing Ogden. And then yeah, Simon Pegg was pretty good as well for the parts he was in the movie. He I feel like the character the character is more involved in the book. But yeah, I like how Simon Pegg played him in the movie. So yeah, they, they got the characters right for the most part. <laughs> There's some differences, but the, where the differences stand out are in like the in like the storyline, how they get the keys and stuff, and yeah, and they changed a lot from the book. And I think for the most part, it was, um, it, I think it's a good thing they changed it because you don't want it to be dragging along, where you can get away with that in the book, but instead, yeah, they, I mean, they, I think they do it well. And with Ernest Cline like writing and helping with the script, I think yeah they do do it well in the movie. Where I think what is one of my negatives is when they get the keys. I feel like it's not as big of a challenge because it felt more of a challenge to the character uh, to the characters, especially Parzival because he's the main focus in the book. But I felt like yeah it didn't seem much of a challenge. And in the book yeah they had a long process for like. Parzival and each of them trying to get these keys and, and yeah that's what like stuck out the main difference that stuck out from the book is how they get the keys and what's like what happens throughout the book and the, for the book it is much darker I think they try to appeal to more audiences in the movie which is a fine thing and also the references I think the references of course from uh, the book the movie also change which is also a good thing because the book focuses a lot on the 80s when they like talk about games music movies 
and this one yeah this one yeah he, they kind of dive in all areas all like like different years from the 70s 80s 90s and even the 2000s you see like a lot of references to movies and like i mean even see like hello kitty you have like overwatch you have like chucky of course you've seen him in the trailer i'm trying not to go too much into it i want it to be a surprise to people but yeah it's just like yeah a lot of references i feel like i could not process it all of them well because i feel like i have to see this movie again because it is just like yeah it's a mind-blowing experience with all these references and i think yeah definitely did not catch all of them at once watching this movie and i'm about to jump into a big spoiler right here but i think my favorite part of the movie was when they go into the overlook hotel which is just an awesome scene for us from The Shining. They even have the twins from like the Overlook Hotel, which is like pretty cool. And it jumps into a really good horror scene, which I think is really awesome. And of course, what I haven't talked about is the live action scenes outside the Oasis. I think they're uh, they're well done. Yeah, I think you get you don't get as much like as, as dark as like as it is from the book. It doesn't feel like they're in like a like a future that is like in turmoil i think they do hint at it because like yeah the stacks of course and yeah and but it doesn't feel like that dark or like like the future has gone way downhill but definitely i think it's gone downhill of course as much as they everybody would want to go into the oasis which is cool and of course jumping back to the references i have to talk about the iron giant in the movie it was cool well i don't want to go into how it was controlled but i like the way they put it in this movie in the book it wasn't really like it was only referenced once in the book and it never really had any like purpose in the book but here I, it had a really good purpose in the movie especially towards the end i thought it was like yeah Definitely fun to have the Iron Giant. I think it's the one thing that stands out the most in this movie. And it's really well done. That So th yeah, this movie is fun. And I wouldn't say it's the greatest Spielberg movie ever, I think. But it's, I remember he's going back into this like, into like a fun movie. Because he's kind of been on the serious movies right now. Like The Post, The Bridge of Spies. Of course, he had the BFG, which came out a few years ago or a couple years ago. Which was like a kid's film. But this one definitely had the like, I mean... Definitely was fun to watch. It was thrilling at points. And the Oasis, I mean, a lot of CGI, but definitely like deserve that because this is a video game world. And it, yeah, this is crazy how this movie came to be. And yeah, I kind of almost regret reading the book because I read the book because yeah, I knew the movie was going to come out. And that was like a year ago where I read the book first because I knew they were making a movie of this. But if you read the book just right before watch this movie, you probably did something wrong. You probably expected things to happen that didn't really happen. And I was okay with it because they had to make a good movie out of this one and you don't want it to be dragging along. But yeah, but overall, I really enjoyed it. I am going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Definitely a fun movie to watch if you have not watched it. You've probably been spoiled. <laughs> I probably spoiled some stuff in this video for you, but... Yeah, go watch it and still a lot of fun, a lot of references, and definitely a fun ride. So, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed it if you did watch it. So, tell me what you thought about it in the comments below if you want to. And you can check out my channel for more like movie movie reviews like this, trailer reviews, me talking movies and stuff, all that on my channel. So, yeah. So, until next time, folks, I'll see you guys later. I am out.